Who would pay 450 bucks for a two terabyte SSD? Well, I would. I mean, I did. This thing. If you want to get anything faster than like USB 3, things get weird and expensive. I needed an external SSD so I could back up all my active projects. And when you're dealing with like 10 gig files, syncing things at the end of the day takes a long time if you're stuck on USB. This Ugrain enclosure I bought is 22 bucks and it does 10 gigabits, which sounds like a lot. But in the real world, I was only getting around 150 to 300 megs per second on huge copies. So last year I upgraded. I bought Ugreen's top of the line Thunderbolt 4 enclosure, this thing for 80 bucks. I've been lugging this thing pretty much everywhere with me because I need a high speed way to get files back and forth and I just can't do 4K video editing remotely. But it's got some problems. First, it gets hot. And because of that, sometimes the drive seems to slow down, especially when I'm copying a lot of small files or editing a big project on it. It has a fan, but that fan is terrible. It just kind of goes on and off randomly, even when the drive's completely idle. And it's kind of loud. Loud enough, I have to unplug the drive from my Mac when I'm recording, like right now. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, that's what, it, honestly, if it stayed at full blast, it wouldn't be as annoying, but uh, the fan kind of ramps up. And then it ramps down and it does that constantly. It's idle now. It's been idle for like five minutes. So I wish that they had a setting where you could just say like, keep the fan at whatever speed instead of having it ramping up and down. Cause like I said, it's, it's not loud. It's not objectively loud. It's just super annoying when it does that. And it does that all day long. If I leave it plugged in. That's not a deal breaker for everyone, of course, but it is for me. So I've been looking around for a better drive, and now that I have a Mac Studio with support for Thunderbolt 5, I thought I'd give this thing a try. We're jumping up from 80 to like 300 bucks, but this is supposedly the cream of the crop. It's from Acasis, and it says it supports Thunderbolt 5. But the listing on the tech specs only shows 80 gigabits. What happened to the other 40? Thunderbolt 5 has 120 gigabits, right? Well, it's a funny thing, these high-end I.O. specs. Thunderbolt 5 could maybe put through that much data, but for PCI Express devices like this Kyoxia NVMe drive, it's using PCIe Gen 4x4. And even there, every device on the market's gonna behave differently. And on top of that, every model of SSD behaves differently, especially when they get hot. So my challenge today, will this Acasis drive perform more consistently and more quietly for 300 bucks than the $80 Ugreen using the exact same SSD? I haven't tested every enclosure and drive on the market. This is just me testing out the two I bought to see which one is best for me. And to test them, I'm gonna run Blackmagic's disk speed test and Amorphous Disk Mark with a 16 gig file size. That should bust through caches and give a really good idea of performance over a long period of testing. And the NVMe drive I'm testing, it's a Kyoxia XG8. This drive is fast, but even better, it stays at least pretty fast even when its caches are full. Almost all SSDs are crazy fast nowadays, at least for the first little bit. But a lot of cheaper SSDs skimp out on caches, and on top of that, they're a lot slower once the caches fill up. This XG8 is supposed to stay fast even after its large cache fills up. We'll see how that goes. And one final note, for all my testing, I'm using this expensive Sabrent Thunderbolt 4 cable. If you use a cheap USB-C cable, you might not even get USB 3 speeds. So make sure you don't cheap out on the cable. If the Acasis comes with its own Thunderbolt 5 cable, I'll also test with that and see if it makes any difference. So first I have the uh, QXR already installed inside of here and I'm gonna plug it into my Mac Studio using this cable, which goes through to the back and plugs into one of the back ports because I have a M4 Max Mac Studio, which has Thunderbolt 5 on the back, but USB-C on the front. So it's plugged in and it, the fan is not on right now, but I will uh, let you hear what the fan sounds like after it's been running for a little bit. And let's get to some benchmarking. Okay, so there's our drive, the shuttle. It is two terabytes. I already have some files on it uh, because I am actively using this one. Let's open up Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and select the target drive. We'll do shuttle. And I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna let it go for a few minutes and we'll see if it slows down at all or if uh, the fan kicks in. Uh, right out of the gate, it's you know three gigabytes per second, which is great uh, if you're copying large files to and from it. Not a big deal. Uh, it's really a problem when I'm you know, synchronizing my footage from my uh, network drive over to it that it starts to slow down a bit. So that speed is actually quite good. And uh, as I was doing this, I realized one of the reasons why, why I'm getting the slow speeds is I'm actually copying and synchronizing between a network share 
and a local Thunderbolt drive. So uh, part of my reasoning for buying this new drive is completely invalid because this network drive is attached over a 10 gigabit network connection. So there's no possible way I'm going to get more than 10 gigabits of write performance. And in fact, it should be more like 9 gigabits or 8 gigabits, depending on you know real world conditions copying over the network. And this is amorphous disk mark. It is uh, it's like crystal disk mark for, for the Mac. And I'm going to set a large file size so that we're busting through the caches. And I'm going to switch to shuttle. And uh, yeah, we'll just do it right on the right on the main part of the volume. And I'm going to go ahead and do all of the tests here at 16 gigs. This will take a little while, but you know. We'll see how it does. So the write speed went down a bit, and I think that's because we're definitely busting through the cache. The Kyoxia drive has about two gigabytes per second of write performance uh, when you run out of cache. So I think that's what we're hitting here. And uh, the you know the 4K is always going to be very slow. Um, that's just the nature of how disks work. But this is these are pretty good numbers. I'm actually a little bit surprised. I was thinking this would go down, but thinking about the fact that the slowness was more the networking than the thunderbolting, uh, that's not too surprising. But I still do think that the other drive will be faster. We'll see. Um, but this is Thunderbolt 4, and the fan has started going off. I'll let you listen to what it sounds like when the fan is running. And yes, I will be talking about mechanical keyboards. That's a whole uh, a whole thing. It's an addiction that you do not want to get into. Uh, this is actually still hot to the touch. It's not burning hot right now, but uh, it's warm enough. And I'm going to take this apart, get the drive out of it, swap it over to this guy. I do like the rubber bumper that it comes with. It probably insulates the drive a little bit much, but uh, it is nice because that way I don't feel as bad about throwing this around in my bag. Oh, I guess you push back a little bit and then up. And there's a uh, there's a little thermal pad uh, for heat sinking. Any of these kind of drives that you use, you got to have some sort of heat sinking. Otherwise, it will not cool off. And this drive, actually, I'm missing the little sticker that goes on it. So it's literally it's heat sinking the bare die on it there. There's that noisy little fan in there. I actually thought about modding this, but there's not much room for any kind of fan, so the fan that they have is kind of what you're stuck with. It also is not a case that has any easy access. It seems like I'd have to kind of yank this out, and that could be a destructive process. So I decided not to fool around with this too much and just move on to this enclosure to see if it's better. Okay, what do we get in the box? I have not opened this up, so I have no idea if they include a cable or anything like that. It's nice when they include a cable because these uh, these Thunderbolt cables get very expensive, and for 300 bucks, you'd expect it to come with everything. So here's the little little box. Uh, it has a big fan grill in the front, but where does it exhaust? Oh, I guess it exhausts out the side here, and this side, so it kind of blows across. And there's a button for fan control, I presume. 80 gigabits Thunderbolt 5. There's a thing here that says open. I don't know what that exactly entails. Oh. Maybe it's just magnets. Yeah, little little ball bearings. I don't know if those are magnetic. Yeah, they're not magnetic. They're just little ball bearings to retain this. So interesting design on that cover. I'm a little bit nervous that uh, it might not stand up to the test of time there. Not the worst thing in the world, but for 300 bucks, you'd expect it to be a little bit. At least it's not coming off just doing that, but it doesn't require a lot of force to get that off. Easy for installation, at least. Oh, this actually comes with a little tool. So the U-Green has screws at each location. This one has this thing, which is a one-time use, because you snap these off if you have a shorter NVMe SSD. But it, honestly, if you're buying something this expensive, you're going to get a 2280 that is a high-quality SSD. You don't want to put a cheap little, like, you know, Steam Deck SSD in there. That'd be silly to do. Good that they include it, but it would have been slightly nicer to have screws in here that you could use. But uh, yeah, we'll see if this all works out. So I'm going to put this in first. And then I guess you put this on here and push down. I mean, it, it's, it's nice that it's toolless, but I still... 
Okay, it's not coming out at least. It just seems a little awkward uh, having a little rubber bumper in there that kind of holds that in. But if it works, it works, and we'll see. This is not a long-term review, but I might come back and do that at some point. So I have 0.5 millimeters and a little thicker, one millimeter. I don't know if they have a guide here for which one to use. <laughs> you know what? This guide doesn't even show installing the thermal pad. That's kind of uh, disappointing. The other thing I'm wondering is there's no, there's a fan. The fan doesn't seem to blow through the drive bay area at all. So it's relying just on this thermal heat sink, which the instructions don't say to use. So uh, I, that seems that seems like a miss here. For 300 bucks, I'm expecting a little bit better installation guide because not everybody knows what these are even for. Uh, there's not even a guide for this guy in there. So come on, you, you have this big old manual. Put, put one extra page with the extra instructions. I'm gonna try the one millimeter pad that's actually a little tricky. This this pad is like literally exactly as wide as this opening. So getting it to fit inside is a little bit tricky. I don't know if that's even going to be enough. I don't know if that's going to make contact or not. But it does come with a cable. And this one has five on it, so I don't know if it is substantially different than a Thunderbolt 4 cable. So it's it's very slightly wider and a little bit shorter than uh, this U-Green and the depth is about the same actually with the uh, with the way the top and bottom goes. It's actually not that much smaller but it will fit in a pocket a little bit better. Although with, uh, with the way this is designed I'm a little bit nervous about putting it in a pocket because you, the way it opens is you just pull on it and it's gonna snag on stuff so I don't know. that There are some puzzling things about this. 300 bucks I want something a little bit more robust, but we'll see how it, it works when I plug it into the Thunderbolt 4 cable. Okay, there's a green LED. No other LED on the device, and I don't hear it yet, so there's no fan going right now. Okay, if I hold it down, it turns on the fan. And that's very quiet, so... If it can keep that performance and not get super hot, that wouldn't be so bad. That's that's a pretty quiet fan, quieter than the Ugreen for sure. All right, we'll put it in there and we'll see how it performs. Okay, we have the shuttle up here and it's the same stuff that was before. We'll select that as the target drive down here and hit start. So immediately seeing a gigabyte per second faster on the writes and that's like, almost three gigabits per second faster read speeds. I think we might be, uh, we might be getting close to the limits of the XG8 here. That's, uh, that's definitely a substantial improvement in performance and it has not turned on the fan whatsoever. And really quick, I'm gonna pop over to the Thunderbolt settings here and see. Uh, we have the TB501 Pro and it says it's connected at a speed of 80 gigabits per second, so. That's uh, as it says on the tin. All right, and let's do amorphous disk mark. Do it right on the root level, 16 gigabytes. We'll do five tests like the other one and hit start and I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we uh, definitely are hitting the right limits for the cache. And uh, so this one is still giving a, a little more speed. So overall, this is not a full review of this thing or even this thing. It's more of a, I had a problem with this one. The main problem was that fan, which got super annoying and you could actually hear it on recordings from across the studio, which I have a low noise floor here. So this is not, this thing is not gonna be super loud in most people's houses and environments and things, but it is for me. So, you know, that's why 80 bucks was just not good enough and I had to spend 300 bucks to get the Thunderbolt 5 experience. If you have an SSD that will take advantage and you need the speed and you want something quiet, this is pretty good. It's not perfect. There's a couple things I don't like about it. The hardware design of it. Uh, I want a screw or something that's a little bit more retained than, you know, this little thing here. And also the instructions leave something to be desired. Uh, but it, we'll see. I, I, you know, if, if I have any major problems with it, I'll update that in a comment at some point. Um, but yeah, the, the TB501 
501 Pro from Acasis. I, I recommend it with caveats. I guess I'll say that much. And I think that it's a bit expensive for the hardware design that you get. But on the other hand, it is fast and it is very quiet. So if you run this in a studio environment, this is going to be worth it for you. There are other pre-built SSDs from like Otherworld Computing and other places that are Thunderbolt 5 and that will be very fast. But this is not a terrible option if you need the speed and if you need the silence.